Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is Game and Fish Director Terry Steinwan. Terry, the 2019 legislature wrapped up about a week ago. Uh, Game and Fish was watching around 40 bills, uh, outdoor related bills. How did things go? Actually, it, it, it's like almost every other legislative session. This is me, be my seventh session as director. And you start out every session by saying, oh, geez, holy smokes, about where are we going to go with this? And about halfway through, you, you tend to get the confidence back. Right after crossover, the, the paranoia starts setting in again. But when it's all said and done, I, I think the outdoors did pretty well in this legislative session. There were some, there were some massive shifts and changes in some of the legislation that occurred up to the very end. But I'd say for the most part, we did pretty good. Okay, let's move on to the Game of Fish budget bill, Senate Bill 2017. Uh, how did that go? Uh, excellent, excellent. Uh, we, we started out on the Senate side, and uh, the governor's budget, the executive budget, was, was for the most part, at least in, in numbers-wise, was absolutely adopted by the Senate and, and also by the House. We ran into a, a little glitch that was very quickly resolved, not caused by the governor or Game and Fish budget or legislators, but uh, resolved, we're, we're pretty much sitting as same uh, as we are this way. We didn't lose any money. We actually gained about $500,000, uh, and that is in shooting range grants. Uh, I think, as a lot of people know, we're really, really trying to get some, some good shooting ranges out there. Uh, this extra 500000 is already spoken for, honestly, but we're constantly looking for where can we put some public shooting ranges to get out there. And there's actually a bill in Congress right now uh, I believe it's House Bill 1227 that would actually make it easier us easier for us to do it because currently right now we can only pay 75 percent of federal money on a shooting range. This particular bill would allow us to pay up to 90 percent of that funding. So as long as we have those federal have those federal aid funds coming in, we can actually do more on the landscape out. So, so that's a good thing. Uh, some other things that kept passed through or came through on our budget, which really isn't a change, but uh, last session, $250,000 was appropriated for the Clay Target League, which is really a, a quickly growing or quick growing sport in, in North Dakota and across the nation. Uh, we've gotten another $250,000 to, to work with on that for the next biennium. And uh, also, our, our grants are sitting pretty good. We're, we're down in some areas, we're up in others. But the reason we're down is we requested less funding, and where we asked for more funding, we got it. So overall, the budget stuff just went tremendous, I think. And I, I have to give uh, all of our staff, in particular Kim Carey, a big thank you for that because she does a great job. Her and the accounting staff do a wonderful job of putting that stuff together. We go through it. Uh, she basically presents it, and she's a very credible individual and uh, the legislators know, she, know that she knows what she's talking about. Okay, let's move on to Senate Bill 2293. That's the Aquatic Nuisance Species Bill. Explain that one, Terry. That, that one, actually, that, that was one evolved. It was actually brought forward, uh, not a department-sponsored bill. It was North Dakota Sport Fishing Congress, uh, an organization that's made up of, of all, almost all the, the fishing clubs in the state. And for years, they, they've really been asking us to do more on aquatic nuisance species, or ANS, in North Dakota, and we don't disagree. Uh, our primary focus has been on education, information. There are some regulations out there, but if we can get by without further regulations, we certainly, uh, certainly propose to do that or hope to do that. Uh, what this bill would do is actually add a small amount onto a resident fishing license, with the exception of uh, resident or seniors over 65, uh, disabled veterans, so on and so forth and add $3 on to um, non-resident fishing licenses and non-resident waterfowl licenses. In addition, and this came in the second half of the session, not something that the Sport Fishing Congress had even asked for in the beginning anyway, was uh, to add $15 for resident boats that are registered in North Dakota, uh, and that's $5 per year since we're on a three-year cycle, and any boat registered outside of the state would would have a fifteen dollar annual fee, and that 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 would have to be for. It's currently on the governor's desk. Terry, let's talk about the bill that took a lot of your time uh, during the session, Senate Bill twenty three fifteen. Right, probably one of the most controversial bill, at least to to sportsmen and women across the state, and and landowners also. And it really didn't need to be the way it it actually started out. It would have automatically posted everything close to hunting and criminal trespass. Uh, Senator Bob Herbley contacted me 
pretty early in the session, honestly, and said, this probably isn't going, even though he's a primary sponsor. He says, how can we make it work? And, and something that we've been talking about for the last couple of years is potential of electronic posting. So that was added in, and it wasn't perfect uh, coming out of the Senate side. Uh, House side, uh, they, they evolved things a little bit further and actually was, was divided in the House. And the criminal trespass side basically got kicked out in the hunting trespass side, which would be electronic posting somewhere in the future, stayed in. Where it actually sits right now is uh, it passed through the Senate, which, which would basically close everything to, to criminal trespass, meaning if you're not hunting, you couldn't go on land without permission. And on the hunting side, it would stay the way it is. Uh, again, if it's posted, you can't hunt without permission. If it is posted, you can. Uh, from the beginning, uh, again, my seventh session, what I've consistently heard from landowners is it's the time and the expense to put all those posting signs out there. And there are some in the West that are really difficult to post. Uh, if you've ever been out there hunting, the terrain can be really rough. Can they do it? Yes, but it takes an awful lot of their time. So we figured if we can address those two issues for landowners and what the, the sportsmen and women are saying is we just want to know who to contact. If we could address those three issues, we felt we had accomplished uh, a lot, at least a step in the right direction. Uh, the bill itself was defeated, but the legislators were, were, were wise enough, I guess I'd say, to actually take the study language for the electronic posting and put it on the Information Technology Department bill. Uh, so that, that study is still alive and well. And it's going to be five legislators, uh, two members from an ag organization or landowners, and then two representatives from a uh, sportsman's organization. And, of course, Game and Fish, uh, Information Technology, Association of Counties, and uh, Association of S uh, State's Attorneys are going to be represented on there as non-voting members. Uh, I guess I would just urge the public is don't get so emotional about that. Don't, I, I've read a few posts on there on both sides that really gets personal and I would just ask people don't do it. let's be reasonable at this we're 80 to 90 percent of the hunters and landowners in North Dakota are very very reasonable let's focus on those that are reasonable and let's do the right thing and I and I think it will uh, we have some great lawmakers out there that are willing to work on this issue to try to get the best that we possibly can now North Dakota would be leading the nation if we go to an electronic posting database because it's never been done before and uh, I, I think we have the capability, we meaning a state, have the capability of putting a real good product out there that will work for everybody and address those three issues that I mentioned earlier. A lot of good information, Terry. Thank you. You bet, Mike. For more information on all the outdoor-related bills, go to the Game of Fish website at gf.nd.gov. For Game of Fish Director Terry Steinwand and the rest of the staff here at the Game of Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.